Okay, so in this short video, I'm just going to be talking about Google's ranking factors. Now, Google has over 200 different ranking factors when it comes to what pages they decide will go, you know, be first on their page. Now, with that being said, there's a few main ones. There's only about like, I'm going to say really 10 main ones that you need to focus on because the rest, you know, obviously there's, they put more prominence on certain factors and then other ones are just other like cherries on top. So we are going to be diving into that right now. They, they've, they've at least categorized these to the ones that are more important at the top and then it goes lesser and lesser. So just taking a quick brief look, obviously direct website visits. So if your website gets a ton of traffic, that's going to help you rank faster and higher in Google search results or any search engines results for that matter. But I'm speaking specifically for Google right now because Google gives us the most information on how their search engines work, whereas Yahoo and Bing can be a little bit, well, they're, they're less popular search engines, so there just isn't as much information given to users as Google does. Google makes a huge push for people to market and do PPC with them, so they like to give out more info. So basically, website visits, that's a huge one. Is your website popular? You know, they want especially in the more recent years. I think when Google Penguin came out, that's when they really started pushing for quality. And um, I know a lot, it made the job for SEO people a lot harder because now they probably weren't able to manage as many different websites because you have to focus on creating more higher quality content and being more of an authority. So therefore you have to ch pick and choose who you want to work with and things like that. Um, so it made, it, it made SEO a little bit more difficult, but what Google's trying to do is incentivize the people who create really good quality content so that their content is being shown over other people who don't produce as, as good of quality. And obviously traffic is a, is a huge signal, like it's, it's a huge social signal to be able to know, you know, do people enjoy your website? Also then how much time are they spending on your website? That That's also important because that lets us know, is your website good quality or is it not? And then of course, pages per session. So how how far into your website are they staying? You know, are they looking through a bunch of different pages? Are they finding your website really helpful? Because all of these factors, these uh, basically the top four factors that Google looks for is all about how long, number one, how many people are coming to your site and how long are they staying there? Those are the first two ranking factors, which I think would surprise a lot of people because I think they probably go, oh, your keywords are number one. That used to be number one, but now that's way further down the list. So it's all about quality, how many people are getting to your website and how long are they staying there? Then of course you have things like total referring domains. And now we're starting to get into the backlinking part of the SEO, off, uh, offsite SEO part of the, the rankings. So total referring domains would be how many different websites do you have backlinks to, or have backlinks to you? So basically, you know, how many articles do you have out there that are pointing back to your website? How much content is out there that's pointing back to your website? And usually these are things from other sites. So it wants to know, you know, have other people linked out to you as being a source of information on this topic. And when that happens, you get a lot more authority and a lot more rankings. And then total backlinks is just the total number of backlinks that your website has, which is important, but even more than the number of backlinks is the quality of backlinks. So what is the quality of those websites that you're getting links from? And I can tell you for sure that that is a, a big one that Google looks for, not just number. Because I've, I've seen some websites that only have maybe five or six backlinks, but they're from such high quality websites that be have been around for a long time, like places like, you know, Moz or, uh, oh geez, I'm trying to think of some other ones like Wayback Machine, that's probably not a good good one to, to recommend. But like, you know, Google, like really high authority websites that are 
they are the go-to thought leaders in their industry. If you've gotten on any of those websites or, or things that are really uh, have high domain authority like uh, .gov sites or .edu sites, those tend to have more value and more link juice given to them than other types of just like any old blog or things like that. Also, if a blog or a website has been around longer, and I'm sure this will be a, a um, criteria later down this road, but domain authority is also another ranking factor. So if you have uh, backlinks from domains that are really well aged and they have a lot of domain authority, that will help you increase your domain authority and your website authority as well. So total referring IPs, kind of the same here. Uh, they want to know how many different computers like visitors, people have come from like all around the web. So if you are very popular, you know, globally or, or internationally or even within your country, but they're seeing that there's a lot of different IP activity, that's a good thing because that means more visitors, more traffic. The other thing that they're looking for is follow back backlinks. So basically how many people are clicking on your, your links to go to these uh, different sites or on different sites on third party sites people that are finding your content how many people are linking through and clicking on that content then of course there's content length that is also another important ranking factor if you go type in anything into google and you see the things the results that come up on the first page you're going to notice that that content for just about every single website on page one is going to have lengthier content. There's a good chance that their content is going to be over a thousand words long. Very rarely nowadays, and it's been like this for probably about two or three years now, we'll say two, where you're going to find longer and longer blog posts and content. And the reason for that is because Google is rewarding that type of behavior. They want to give the best quality, right? So people that are looking for answers, they want to make sure, well, we don't want just a 300 word blog post and someone's just giving a short little answer. We want the person who's searching for this, whatever query it may be, you know, this topic, we want to give them a good amount of information to go off of so that it's actually answering their question and helping them. You know, a 300 word blog post you may be able to help someone, but you're going to have to be very crafty in your language so that, you know, words aren't wasted and things like that. And you're not going to get very good rankings with just a 300 word blog post. You're really going to want to beef it up and add more content there if you hope to increase your organic rankings. The other thing they look for is website security. So do you have an HTTPS in, uh, for your website that helps increase your ranking uh, your rankings as well total anchors and the other thing I want to add to this well I guess <laughs> that kind of adds here but total anchors this is like your your uh, hyperlinks so how many links do you have on your website and not only that but are your hyperlinks optimized is there a keyword in the anchors now this is a tricky one because there actually was a uh, Google Penguin I believe was the main update where Google started cracking down on hyperlinks that were overly optimized. So if they saw that, you know, out of all the hyperlinks on your website, if like 80 or 90% of them were straight keywords, they were going to kind of penalize you for that a little bit. So you don't want to make every single hyperlink a keyword, but I would suggest, you know, if you, if you link out to something in an article, let's say four or five times, make one or two of those a keyword and definitely differentiate like use variations of your keyword don't just use the same keyword over and over again that's a big no-no another one is a uh, is your keyword in the body so the body of the te the content the text um what is your keyword density we want to make sure that we are not only using our focus keywords whatever those may be but we also want to use variations of our focus keyword. So for example, let's say our focus keyword is email marketing tips and we want to try and rank for that keyword. We don't want to keep using email marketing tips over and over and over again. We need to find variations of that keyword to use within our content. So maybe it would be 
email marketing tips for beginners. That could be a variation or email marketing tips in 2018 or email marketing tips or like free email marketing tips, right? Something like that, just a variation of that keyword so that it's not exactly the same over and over again. And of course, keyword in your title, the title of your pages and the title of your blog posts, that's really important. And then of course, including your keyword in the meta data is important as well. And having a video on page is now more important than it used to be because people are transitioning more over to listening to things via video and audio than reading blog posts especially now as mobile gets to be more and more popular and people need to access information quickly, video and audio is the way to go with that. So those are the main Google ranking factors that are the most important to focus on. And outside of that would be um, also social media factors as well. So social signals like how much engagement are people spending on your social media channels as well as how many followers you have. So that would be my other criteria here on this list is social signals. So as you can see, Google is really placing a large emphasis on really social, like how people are actually interacting with your brand, company, business, and website. So the more popular the more popular you are the better quality content that you're able to provide the better off you're going to be all around and i know that's a little bit of a bummer for some people because content creation can be difficult sometimes it can be expensive and it can take a while however i just want to show you guys this so that you know no matter how easy a certain keyword is to rank for, there still needs to be content behind it. And that content needs to be well-crafted so that you don't have to go back later on and fix everything. You can just create a, a really good quality blog post or video and have that be ranking for years to come. So that's what we, we wanna focus on, quality over quantity. And that's really going to help us rank quicker and for the long term. So join me in the next video as we continue on in this course.